Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm Jennifer Masutani with the Hawaii After School Alliance, and this is a webinar part of our OST community meetings, our out of school time uh, virtual workshops and webinars series that we host to support the after school needs development field in Hawaii. And today we're excited to talk about the If Then collection, which is our free resources to support girls in STEM. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to just share a couple of quick announcements. So I will turn it over to Kobe Takeda from Blue Zones Project Hawaii to share a couple of opportunities. Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Kobe from uh, Blue Zones Project, but I'm wearing purple hats with this um, as there are a lot of overlap between the youth efforts going on in the state right now. Um, and because of a lot of you are working with youth, we'd like to share some opportunities for um, your youth and your organizations to step up to support some of these efforts. So the first one is um, we're going to be launching a, a mini grant program. We have about uh, $70,000 to go um, to youth groups across the state and students who want to do peer to peer outreach campaigns to um, their peers, specifically around vaccination efforts. And so um, if you have an idea, whether it's a PSA, uh, a social media campaign, you want to um, do an on campus incentive program, you want to do something with your group to um, bring in a, a physician or a provider to talk more about the vaccinations and the safety and efficacy around them. Um, and hopefully it leads to a, a, um, some increase in awareness and education around vaccinations. Uh, we would love to support it. And so um, we're going to put out an application soon that allows you to actually um, get funds up to $1,000 to do some kind of campaign. It could go through some incentives or to the production of the program. Um, and we hope to um, support this public health effort. Um, so that's one, and that's a partnership with Hawaii After School Alliance and, and um, Kaiser Permanente and Hawaii Public Health Association, our uh, institute. Um, we also have a training coming up that's um, it's called the YPAR, uh, Youth Participatory Action Research. It's meant to help youth understand how to um, address and understand uh, issues in their community. And this will also be tied to some funding opportunities in the future. Um, but we're having a, 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 a training this October that you can all sign up to. And, and all of this will be sent out um, with Jennifer in a, in a post uh, session email. Um, but this is a great way to have youth kind of lead the efforts and they can identify what the issues in the community and how to solve it um, through different means, whether it's uh, photo voice or surveying or um, um, community mapping, things like that. Okay, I have two more, just hang with me. All right, this is an opportunity. Um, the YMCA, After School Alliance, Blue Zones and other groups, uh, Youth Service America is giving away a bunch of prizes. We're, we're just trying to understand what are the challenges in the community now? And so this is an opportunity for youth to kind of use your voice, just share small messages around um, what they're passionate about in the community and how they can take action against them. And so it's a simple two question survey that youth can fill out and they get entered into prizes. We have about a, a 50 prizes to give out for that. And then the finally last one is uh, in partnership with Kupu, um, there's an opportunity for youth to explore um, joining the uh, Youth Sustainability Challenge. And on Monday, they're having a session where they actually can learn about what are the challenges that some of our community partners are facing and how can they create solutions, whether it's a, um, a new business, an invention, some kind of program that can solve them. And so a great opportunity for youth to um, learn about um, challenges in the community, especially in the environment and um, actually take action toward them. Thanks, Jen, for the opportunity. And if anyone has questions, feel free to drop in the chat and I'll stick around for a little bit and answer them. Thanks. Thanks, Kobe. Um, I have just a couple quick more things and then We'll turn it over to Jessica to get started. Okay. So we are excited to have our virtual conference coming up in October. It's the Ahalo Kahi Hawaii Community Conference, and it's a joint conference along with the Open Minds Open Spaces Conference on October 20th through 22nd. And we have some really exciting workshops and speakers lined up, including workshops on um, how to practice inclusion for youth with disabilities and programs, family engagement, supporting youth mental health, and a bunch of other really awesome topics. And so we hope that you will join us. I will put the link in the chat in a moment. And then we also want to invite you to our next OST community meeting, which will be on Friday, February, um, sorry, Friday, September 24th at 10 a.m. And we're going to be joined by Don O'Brien and Tony Silva to talk about Choose Aloha, and they'll be sharing their free SEL resources and strategies. So hope you can join us for that. And then I'm putting the link for both our conference and this um, SEL workshop in the chat. 
And now I'm excited to introduce Jessica Hay, who is the Marketing and Partnerships Manager for the National Girls Collaborative Project. Um, Jessica Hay um, brings over 10 years of nonprofit experience with focus on youth development. Prior to joining NGCP, Jessica led STEM wellness and quality improvement initiatives with the California After School Network. She also led coalition building efforts to increase funding for for and access to quality after school and summer learning at the local, state, and federal levels. So thank you so much, Jessica, for joining us, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Anytime I get to work with uh, an after school network, I get pretty excited because it's, it's where I used to be. Um, so yes, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. So I'm here to share about free resources, which is always exciting. Um, I remember when I was at the After School Network or when I ran programs, anytime there was high quality free resources, we, we would get pretty happy. So these resources are really designed for programs to use um, in their STEM learning uh, spaces. So a quick welcome. If you aren't speaking, if you can mute yourself, um, you can use the chat for questions and comments throughout the session. Um, and if I don't uh, see it, then just feel free to come off mute or raise your hand because that I will for sure see. Um, sometimes when you share your screen, you know, some of the other Zoom capabilities go away. Um, if you wanna share your name and, and what program you're with uh, in the chat, that would be great. Um, and, and if you wanna share something that you're hoping to get from this session, um, that would be fantastic as well. And I'll keep an eye on that. Um, so kind of what my piece is gonna go through is a little bit of overview of the National Girls Collaborative Project because while yes, this session is focused on if then, um, National Girls Collaborative has a ton of other activities and resources that you might be interested in knowing about. Then I'll do a nice background of the if then initiative and the collection. And I'll actually show you what the website is. I'll show you how to find resources. So I'm gonna do like a live demonstration of the If Then Collection website. And then we'll get to engage with some of the content and we'll do a little you know, reflection at the end and, and let you head on your way. So that is kind of an overview of our time together. So the vision of the National Girls Collaborative Project is to support and create science, technology, engineering, and math experiences that are diverse as the world we live in. Um, to do this, NGCP connects, creates, and collaborates with a network of advocates to promote equity and transform STEM for girls and all youth. So NGCP exists because today's expense, STEM experiences continue to lack diversity and many young people do not identify um, with the field. So to create that change, our work empowers providers, educators, leaders, and youth themselves, which is a big vision, right? That's a, 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 that's a quite a hefty vision that we have. Um, so to accomplish that, um, we have some goals that we focus on. So NGCP believes that STEM skills can be acquired by anyone and fostered in everyone. So our initiatives build confidence and create a community of lifelong STEM activators. Through the power of collaboration, we spark curiosity and develop a passion for STEM. We share resources and solutions with coalitions of leaders um, via our website, newsletter, online databases, social media, webinars, workshops like this, um, and, and so much more. We also strengthen the capacity of programs by producing and sharing exemplary practices, research, and program models. So when programs are stronger and more sustainable, girls and youth are better served. And we distribute these resources in really accessible formats. So we have um, train the trainer programs, partnerships, online platforms, and a lot of different ways that we engage with folks. And then finally, we leverage a network of girls serving STEM programs, advocates, and youth so that together we can create uh, the tipping point for gender equity in STEM. And so we do that through a lot of activities. So real big vision, big lofty goals, and we do that through some of these partnerships and activities that we have. And these are done nationally and through local collaboratives. So we partner with organizations to scale and deliver content such as Leap into Science National 
um, Network in partnership with the Franklin Institute and the Million Girls Moonshot in partnership with STEM Next um, and the Ma After School Statewide Networks. Um, we also partner with um, organizations like Lida Hill Philanthropies, who has launched the If Then Collection, which is a digital library of photos, videos, and media, but I'm not going to say too much about that because that'll be coming in just a minute. Uh, we also host a girls advisory board. And so this girls advisory board helps to review and provide feedback on current NGCP initiatives and really assists in informing the future direction of NGCP. So if you do have anyone that is interested in um, any girls that would be interested in serving on the girls advisory board, I'll pop a link in the chat um, for, the, for the application and all of the information. We also manage the Connectory, which is the largest national database of STEM opportunities. Um, it provides a way for program providers um, to connect and collaborate with each other as well and to kind of share what, what folks are doing across the country. We also um, have the Fab Fems, which is an international database of female role models from a ton of different STEM fields. And they're really passionate about the work they do and they're ready to connect with programs to really spark girls' interests. We also have regular webinars. Um, we have national webinars uh, on a variety of topics that, that we offer all the time. And then we work locally with statewide collaborative leadership teams to offer convenings, provide professional development, mini grants um, for innovative projects when funding's available. Um, and then we, we also distribute their newsletters and spot, spotlight local resources um, within our networks as well. Okay. So this is what we're here for today. Um, and I really love the If Then initiative and the If Then collection. So I'm just gonna upfront say, sorry for my like nerd out, get real excited. Cause um, I can't help it. And when you watch some of these videos, you're gonna be like, okay, I understand why Jessica is such a crazy person and super excited. So the If Then initiative is a national effort um, that is sponsored by Lida Hill Philanthropies, and it's really created to inspire young girls to pursue STEM careers um, while creating a culture shift in how the world perceives women in STEM. So they really, the If Then Initiative really seeks to further advance women in STEM by funding current innovators and inspiring that next generation of pioneers. So it's kind of that dual purpose. Um, it's really rooted in a belief that there's no better time to highlight positive and successful female role models. Um, and it's designed to create that culture shift that I just talked about um, by doing three things, funding and elevating women in STEM as role models, convening cross-sector partners in entertainment, fashion, sports, business, and academia um, to really illuminate the importance of STEM everywhere in, in all aspects of life. And then three, by inspiring girls with better portrayals of women in STEM through media and learning experiences to really pique their interests in STEM careers. If then is really based on that idea that if she can see it, then she can be it. So it's really about showing today's real women in STEM to girls across the country. I'm gonna play a quick little video. Um, this just highlights a little bit about the If Then collection um, and showcases some of the incredible women um, that are in, that are featured within the collection. If Then, an initiative from Lida Hill Philanthropies aims to empower STEM innovators as role models and inspire the next generation of girls to pursue STEM careers. The If Then collection is the largest database of images available depicting real women in STEM featuring photos, videos, posters, bios, and more from amazing women innovators with unique STEM careers. These items are free for non-commercial and non-profit use. The collection is a core component of the If Then mission to change the way the world sees women in STEM. We can't wait to see how your organization might use these images to inspire the next generation. Your ideas are valuable. Don't limit yourself to professions that you think sort of exist in a box. You can be really creative. How do I get to a certain place and do I need to always take a traditional route? There are no rules. Own your career. Own your journey. You should really embrace how unique you are as a person. And eventually you'll succeed. If we never say no to any dream, then the world is your oyster.
Interested in using the If Then Collection in your school or nonprofit organization? Visit the ifthencollection.org to learn more. So that's just some of the ambassadors um, that are that are featured in the collection. And so the collection really is um, thousands of photos, videos, other assets that authentically represent women in these different fields. Um, the content features careers as diverse as shark tagging, fashion design, training Olympic athletes, and literally everything in between. Um, the shark tagging one, every time I say that gets me because I have a very large phobia of sharks. And I feel like if I would have had one of these amazing ambassadors when I was a kid to look up to, maybe I wouldn't be so afraid of sharks. I probably would still be afraid. I watched Jaws very young, so that kind of did it. Um, so this collection really nudges public perception um, in a more realistic direction that illuminates that importance of STEM learning opportunities. One of my favorite parts of the collection is the triple AS if then ambassadors. So there's 125 amazing STEM professionals across a variety of industries who are really interested in working with that next generation. And so these women are available to um, work with and speak with young people and help inspire um, folks, young people to um, pursue STEM careers. So these are role models that you could reach out to, to connect with the programs and the youth that you serve, which is very exciting. Okay, so here's, uh, first of all, who doesn't love this picture of Dr. Ray Wynn Grant here um, holding a baby bear that's yawning because it just brings joy to my heart every time I see it. Um, so these are some of the images that are the field shots that you can see. So these are, these are actual women scientists out in the field doing their work, which is really exciting to see. And so these images can be used in your social media. You can use them in marketing. You can use them in anything that you want. You could add them to presentations. You could just have them printed and on a bulletin board, you know, like you can use them for anything that you want. They're totally free. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this screen share, sorry. It's gonna be a little bit of back and forth here. Um, and while I do that, I'm gonna pop those websites from the National Girls Collaborative Project into the chat box in case you wanna check any of those out. And now I'm gonna screen share, maybe that did the wrong thing, sorry. Now I'm gonna screen share the website. So this is the If Then Collection website. So it's just ifthencollection.org. Um, pretty easy to remember. And this is what you see when you um, come to the homepage. So I'm gonna point out a couple of features on this homepage. One of them is the featured categories. And so <clears throat> these are kind of curated collections that you can jump to for quick access for a specific topic. So if you're doing something around um, climate science and you just want to click on the climate science one to see what what is the curated collection for that so you can click on those and it'll pop up in a second and you'll see all the different things that are related to climate science climate education that might be um, within the collection and so you can see here that there's some photos um, there's different photos of the women out doing their jobs. There's videos here, so you can tell it's a video by the little icon at the top. And then there's also activity sheets as well. And so this is just one example of the featured categories. The other featured category I want to point out is these ambassador profiles. So if you are interested in connecting with any of these amazing women, you can just click on that ambassador profile one and you'll get all their contact info. So let's see. I'm looking for someone that I've worked with just recently or highlighted. Oh, uh, Adrian Starks is really great. She just won an award recently, which is really exciting. Um, so she is one of our ambassadors. She happens to be based in Alabama. So you can see that here. Um, the profiles will say a little bit about what they do and where they work. This link here is where you can click and get all of the assets, any photos that have Adrian in it, any videos, activity sheets, 
what I really want to show you is all of this. This is all of their contact information. So if you wanted to email Dr. Starks and have her join your program and talk to the young people that you work with, this is where you can connect with her. Um, and then a lot of them have either a website for their organization that they started or their personal website, you know, different things like that. And then their social media is, is on there as well if they have it. So all their contact info is on there. There is a little bit of information, um, their personal statement, just kind of what they want to share about their journey. And then their biography, kind of looking more along the lines of what do they study and what career path have they taken. And then here are topics that, for example, Dr. Starks is very interested in speaking about. So she's really interested in talking about African-American women in STEM, girls in coding, and then STEM in communities. And so that's a way you can kind of pull through and pick some of the ambassadors that you think um, would be best for your programs. Okay, another thing to show you is the search full collection, because this is going to be probably the way that you search the most. You just click on search full collection, and then you'll see there are four drop downs here. So you can search by location. Too far. There we go. So you could search by location, right? So um, we could click on Hawaii and see any asset that is related to Hawaii. Or you can search by type of assets. So if you just want to see all of the photos of women in the field, because you're, you're creating a collage or something, or you want to use it for an activity, you can just click on field shots and all the field shots of women out in the field will show up. So that's one way. You can also choose by discipline here. So if you're looking to do an engineering lesson, and so you want to get an activity that has to do with engineering, you can just do the drop down, click on engineering, and you'll see everything that has to do with engineering pop up. You can do more than one filter. So if you're doing engineering and then you want to see activity sheets, there you go. These are any activity sheets that are um, within the engineering field. And then lastly, if you have an ambassador that you're, I'm gonna clear, oops, I'm gonna clear these uh, searches. So if you have an ambassador that you really like, for example, and you want to see everything that they have. Um, so one of them that I absolutely, I mean, I get like nerdy excited about her um, and I'm featuring her later. So I'll show it to you is Sydney Hamilton. She is an aerospace engineer and she is so fun in her videos. But one of the things that I really, really like about her is that she talks about being a, um, a triple threat. So she talks about going into these aerospace engineering spaces and she is young, black and female. And that she goes in there and looks around and there is no one that looks like her. It is, let's be honest, a, a lot of older white men in that field. And so she loves to break down those barriers and change their perceptions of what an aerospace engineer looks like. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I love her. There's many reasons I love her, um, but she also really likes speaking with young people. She's based in Long Beach. So while it's not in the same state as you, at least she's on a little bit closer of a time zone than some of the Eastern um, time, time zone folks. And so you can see here, she has a lot of content in here, including this activity sheet, this video. She's been featured on the CBS morning show, Mission Unstoppable. There's a lot of content to pull from. Okay, the last big thing I wanna show you is when you're on the website and you scroll down to the contact, in here is where you can request a, uh, assets. So anything that's a PDF, the activity sheets, the ambassador profiles, those you can just download straight from the website. But for the videos, um, we just ask you to fill out this information. It's, or, or for the photos, it's just name, organization. The thing I'll show you here is you wanna just say what your intended use is. And that's because these are free for non-commercial use, meaning nonprofits, um, schools, educators, uh, museums, libraries, uh, community-based organizations, right? All those, it's all free for that. 
An example of the commercial use that it's not free for is like the McGraw-Hill textbook company. Uh, so they have a lot of money because they charge an arm and a leg for textbooks. Um, and so we charge them to use the images, right? But for all of you, totally free. And then you just copy and paste the name of the, the um, asset that you want. You can add as many as you want here. I will tell you this up here says it takes seven days. It's usually about two to three days and we have it turned around and available for you to download. Um, I like to point out the download because if you are in a space where Wi-Fi sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, or a lot of programs I worked with in California, their school would shut off the Wi-Fi at the end of the school day so that the after school program didn't have access to it, which blows my mind. But um, you can download these videos to be able to show them offline, which is kind of nice to have. You could put them on a flash drive or anything like that. So the last thing about the download is there is an access code. And to be honest, it's just tracking on the back end so that we know how many folks um, are requesting and what purposes they're requesting it for. It's just, it's metrics really for the for our funding, which I'm sure you all understand having to track lots of data for your programs. So there's an access code here. I'm also gonna put that in the chat box. It is also in a PDF of resources that I'm gonna share with Jen for after um, this workshop so that you all have access to it um, afterwards as well. So I'm thinking through every way I could possibly share it with you. One last place I wanna show you is this website, which I'm also gonna put in the chat box. This is where we have all of the activity sheets together. Um, the reason I wanna show you this is up here, you can see a download all. So if you just wanna download all of the activity sheets and put them in a little if then binder for all of your uh, team to use, great. You can just do that right here. You don't have to go through that asset request piece. Or maybe you just want to download um, specific ones. You want to download Britney's and AJ's, and you want to do this medical one. And that's it. Those are the only ones you want right now. So you select what you want, and then you can download the selected. And it just downloads as PDFs. So it's nice and easy to use. So that's the collection. Um, I'm going to stop screen sharing the website and please, please, please ask questions. If I went like too fast through something, um, feel free to ask questions. I have a tendency, even though I'm not from the East Coast, to uh, speak fast sometimes. So if I if I miss something and, and you didn't quite get it, just let me know. Uh, you can always raise your hand or put something in the chat. I'm, I'm pretty, you could just come off mute too, if you really want to. So let's, I'm going to do a quick time check. Um, I want to give you all some time to uh, do a, a quick little uh, activity together. So it's just a simple little scavenger hunt. You can see the um, instructions on here, and I will also put them in the chat box. Um, and I'm going to just send you into, whoa, there we go, um, into breakout rooms. I'll make them fairly big so that uh, you don't feel, you know, to make you feel as comfortable as possible. Because I know sometimes on a Friday, you might be like, listen, Jessica, I do not want to be in a breakout room with just one other person. Um, so I will put those together. What I'm asking is that one person opens up the website and shares their screen. So it's ifthencollection.org and you find all of the ambassadors that are based in Hawaii and based in Washington and based in California. And then list out as many careers as you can find. Um, you know, at least come up with like three or four. And then if you have time, um, take a look at the activity sheets um, and try and find one that you think would be helpful for your programs. So I'm gonna put those instructions into the chat box and then I'm gonna send you just to breakout rooms. Like I said, I'm gonna do them nice and big so that nobody feels um, you know, stressed or like there are only two people in a room um, cause that stresses me out. And before I send you in your rooms, I'm gonna copy and paste those instructions for you. Again, remember it is if then collection.org 
and you're doing a quick scavenger hunt, I'll probably give you about six to seven minutes. Um, I'm just trying to copy and paste these instructions for you. One moment. There we go. So about six to seven minutes to look for these things. Just do as much as you can. If you don't get it all, you don't get it all. It's just to give you a little bit of time actually looking for things in the collection so that when I'm not here, uh, you're able to find things on your own. Okay, I'm gonna send you to breakout rooms. If you have any trouble, uh, there's a little button in your breakout room and you can uh, ask to pop back in. Okay. Uh, Here's hoping these work. Welcome back. Folks are, uh, you know, slowly coming back in as the rooms close. Hopefully that wasn't too painful. It's a Friday, I get it. It's Friday, like lunchtime for me. Um, Friday morning, well, more morning-ish for you all. Okay, um, so if someone, from the different groups wouldn't mind popping in the chat or again, you're more than welcome to come off mute. You do not have to. Um, how many ambassadors you found in Hawaii and Washington? Let's do those first. Just open the chat box so I can actually see what everyone's posting, right? That would be helpful. Yeah, Hawaii just had the one. I'm sorry, I was hoping for more when I was looking. Yep, Washington has three. Now, what about California? Yeah, there's, there's a lot in California. Um, when you think about there's like 125 of them and yeah, I think California is, is, um, is 20, which is insane. Um, it's so many. Uh, I do wanna point out that, that these ambassadors, I, I think I said this earlier, but they're available to like zoom in and do virtual, um, talks with uh, students. And so there's a program in, in Orange County, California that reached out to one of the ambassadors that lives in the DC area. And they're zooming in to do an ocean related um, talk for some of the kids um, for that. So while yes, there's one, unfortunately, um, based where you're at, uh, there are lots that are willing to do um, virtual learning and virtual engagement. Even if like all of your students are in person in a group, um, you might be able to get them to zoom in uh, and you might maybe, if you have access to it, you know, share it on a screen or something. So what are some of the careers that you found? Oh yeah, Miriam is so cool too, by the way. Um, she is starting a PhD program now too. So she is really cool. And, and I know she is very open to working with young people. Mostly I know that because she is friends with one of my colleagues. <laughs> so sometimes I get insider information. Um, yeah, software developers, coders, astronomy, physics, technology. Uh, yeah, the medical physicist. Uh, molecular, molecular, wow, I can't speak, uh, neuroscientist. Okay, somebody put my favorite one. I'm so excited that you put this. Uh, the rocket scientist ballerina, right? That to me just blows my mind. So, so many of these women, not only do they do these incredible careers in STEM, but they're also dancers and artists, and they're just really breaking the stereotype of what a scientist is, which is, I love seeing it. But the rocket scientist ballerina, I think like legit, that is probably my favorite. It is, that's a pretty cool combo. Also Jasmine Sadler, that's who it is, who's based in San Diego is absolutely wonderful. Um, and so if, if you have a chance, check out some of her videos because she's fantastic. Okay, uh, this one is very long. Um, so I'm only gonna play a little bit of it because this video, this is one of the Mission Unstoppable clips but it does feature uh, Miriam. So I'm gonna show you what the Mission Unstoppable show is. And so these are clips that you could show. These are especially good for like filler too, right? If you have an activity that ends like five minutes early and you're like, oh God, cause that's, I used to have that all the time when I were in programs, I would like finish an activity and then look at my watch and be like, shoot, now what? 
Um, so you could have kind of some of these in a file and be ready to um, show them to folks if, if uh, you have extra time. So here we go. We all know stars are giant exploding balls of plasma, but did you also know they burn different colors? Danny Washington went to meet an astronomer who studies just that. If you look up into the night sky, you'll see millions of tiny white lights. We all know they're stars, but did you know that if you use a special telescope, you can see that they're all different colors? And stellar astronomer Mimi Fuchs searches the night sky to study these colors through one of the largest telescopes in the world. I was inspired to pursue astronomy as a career after completing a fifth grade science project. So I chose to study the planet Neptune. And when studying Neptune, I learned that it had seasons that lasted more than 40 years. 40 years! This blew my mind as a small child. And I didn't really realize that it was someone's job to help uncover the mysteries of the universe. Today, I'm in Hawaii at the Imi Loa Astronomy Center, where Mimi will unlock one of those cosmic mysteries for me. I'm so excited to be here. So what are we going to do today? Today, we're going to be learning all about how astronomers look up at the night sky and figure out what their stars and galaxies are made of. And how do we do that? Well, astronomers have instruments at the end of their telescopes that allow them to analyze the light as it comes in. It's OK, I would play the whole video, but it'll, as you can see, we're not even halfway through it. Um, and I. I have some other things I want to show you as well, but that would be a great um, little clip that you could show. I say that they're long. They're like five minutes long, so they're not like 20 minutes or anything like that. They're still, you know, doable um, within your programs. So that's one of the types of videos that you can see. We also have profile videos for these women where they talk about um, their work and what they've done. I want to mention that the long profile videos uh, so if you, when you're searching down type of asset and it's long profiles, those are all, um, we have added closed captioning for all of those and it's in English and Spanish. And then we also have, um, transcripts for them as well. So, so, uh, to help for accessibility. We all know. Okay. I am going to show you this one of, um, Sydney Hamilton, because I'm I'm slightly obsessed with Sydney Hamilton. You'll understand why. Um, oh, if you're not uh, speaking, if you wouldn't mind muting, thank you. Um, okay, so Sydney Hamilton, this is a Curiosity Camp video, and there's an activity sheet that goes with it. So you could show this video and then hand them the activity sheet, and that's like a full lesson for you where you don't have to do a ton. Right, so these are really plug and play um, for programs. This is Quick Q. Got a science or tech question? Your guides have the answers. I'm Sydney Hamilton, I'm an aerospace engineer, and today I'm your guide. Why do you love satellites so much? Because it keeps us connected. And I think now more than ever, we see how important it is to be able to stay connected with each other. You get to play games with your friends. You get to see them on video chat. Even us having this talk right now, satellites are playing a major part of it. What does an aerospace engineer do? So as an aerospace engineer, I've had the opportunity to work on airplanes and in the space sector. For me personally, I work on reflectors. That's a part of a satellite. They can be up to 100 inches wide but they're made out of composite material, which is like a fabric and a glue put together. So they're super light. Do satellites crash in space and that's why my Wi-Fi doesn't work? There's actually a super small chance that a satellite would even crash in space. There are teams and teams of people watching every single satellite to make sure that doesn't happen. So if your Wi-Fi is not working, it's probably just your Wi-Fi provider. Are satellites far away? Satellites are really far away. They're about 22,000 miles away. That's 367,000 soccer fields. You can launch a satellite into space today. Satellites are attached to rockets and rockets drop the satellites off in space. So we're gonna make sure we attach our satellite to the rocket and from here, we're ready for takeoff. What you wanna do is measure out a long piece of string and have two support systems that you can tie it to. First, you're gonna tie it to your first support system, which can be a doorknob or a chair. And then you wanna grab your straw, put the string through the straw, and then tie the other end of the string to your other chair or doorknob. Once you have those together, you're gonna to make sure that your balloon is attached to your straw. 
Once we do this, we remove the clip or just let go of the balloon and it'll take off. And there you have it, your balloon rocket. What has been your favorite engineering project and what challenges did you face? So my favorite project has been 3D printing parts for satellites. Finding out that we can print in aluminum and titanium and that it can still go to space. It definitely came with challenges though. I had never designed for 3D printing and it's totally different than the design work I had done before. That learning curve was really steep, but I had some really great teammates who sat with me and taught me so many things. So it was really cool to be able to learn how to do additive manufacturing or 3D printing. When did you become interested in space and how did you decide engineering was the path for you? Ever since I was a little girl, I've always been fascinated with the sky. I would look up and just wonder what else is out there. And so it makes sense that I'm an aerospace engineer now. I decided engineering was the path for me because I've always loved numbers. How many satellites are in the sky and what happens if they stop working? So there are actually a few thousand satellites in the sky. Only about 1,700 of them are active. When it's starting to die, we use the last bit of fuel before it runs out and we send it back into Earth. The ones that are left in space, just still in orbit. There are companies right now developing new ways to figure out how can we bring all of that space junk back. Space junk is just the dead satellites that are still going around the globe. So how do we clean that up? It's an emerging career path in the aerospace industry that's really fascinating. Have you added more female engineers to the Wing Woman, which I love the name, and if so, how many are a part of your group now? So the Wing Women started off as a group of two. That's me and one of my best friends. We work together to help each other find our voice in the workplace. It just continues to grow as more of a movement to say, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm here to make sure that we as a group of women in engineering help support each other. Do exactly what you love to do and know that there will be challenges along the way, but find your support group that'll keep pushing you to do the things that you love. Work hard so that you can make your dreams a reality. Be sure to visit goldieblocks.com to explore the rest of Basecamp and work on earning your badges. Click the link in the description below to get the behind the scenes of tracking and monitoring snakes and other creatures with my friend Sam. And a huge thank you to Lida Hill Philanthropies for making this episode possible. Okay, so that is the Camp Goldie Blocks or Curiosity Camp. They've just recently changed their name to Camp Goldie Blocks. So sometimes I say both. Um, example of a video. And then this is the activity sheet that goes with it. One thing I wanna mention about these activity sheets, especially the Camp Goldie Blocks ones, is that the um, materials that you need are pretty simple materials that most folks have in programs, right? Scissors, cardboard, uh, some tape, pencils, glue. Uh, at the end of them, there's the template um, at the end of the activity sheet. And so those are really easy, simple things um, that, like I said, most programs have access to or can get access to. The Camp Goldie Blocks activities and activity sheets, I would say skew more towards, and I mean, you just saw them, right? And you see it here on the screen, skew more towards maybe third, fourth, fifth, maybe some sixth graders, whereas some of the other activity sheets that we have, like these ones here um, are designed more for middle school. So maybe sixth, seventh, eighth. Um, and then some of them, if you're working with older youth, I would say you use the profile videos for like career exploration. Um, I was sharing this during the breakout rooms, but they're a great way to help folks, um, help young people think through career paths, what they could study and understand that just because they think when they're younger that their path is gonna take them one direction and it takes a you know complete 180, that's okay. Uh, there's a Dr. Sierra Civils. She thought in high school she was going to be a pastry chef. That was all she wanted to do. Uh, she ended up going to MIT uh, and becoming the first Black woman to get her PhD in nuclear engineering from the University of Michigan and now works for Johns Hopkins over in the Baltimore area. So like pastry chef to nuclear engineer. Um, and I think that's a really great example of a story or a profile, a journey to share with young people. So there's all these other activity sheets. There's this one that's called Get in the Game. It has an educator guide and then um, the student activity sheet. These ones over here also, oh, and this one uses computational thinking to make a board game, which is kind of cool. 
so students can actually make their own board game. And then this one over here, there's a bunch of these ones that have an educator guide and a student activity sheet. And you can't, I mean, you can literally barely see it. It's so small right here, um, but it is tied to different learning standards. So all of those are tied to different like next generation science standards, common core, um, all of that. So you can see that as well. And then this one, this next gen STEM is for, uh, I would say a little bit younger as well. Um, there's like a word search in it, for example, that it's all words tied to a particular career field and featuring an ambassador. So those are, oh, wow, I'm almost out of time. Ah. Um, so those are the activity sheets. I want to show you one more thing. And these are the posters. So these are free posters for your physical spaces. And so if you want to connect with me um, after this and see about shipping out some of these posters, we have some of them already pre-printed um, and, and I could get some shipped out to folks um, if you're interested in having these in your physical space. Because as we all know, representation in our physical space is just as important as within the activities. And these posters are really breaking down the stereotype of what a scientist looks like. Plus, here's Dr. Ray, Win Ray Wynn Grant again with baby bears, which just, again, brings me all the joy. This is the resource page. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot, but you do not have to. You do not have to try and scribble it all down. I have a PDF version of this that I will share. Um, I will email it as soon as we're done um, to Jen so that it can go out to all of you. Um, so, so don't worry. You don't have to scribble down these websites or anything. Uh, so. Those are the resources. My contact info is on there. So if you're having trouble at all working within the collection, finding things within the collection, like please don't hesitate um, to reach out to me. Or if you, for, you know, I had said something and you missed it, whatever it might be. And if you're looking for really awesome posters, um, the posters come in bundles of five and there's like a general STEM one, there's a tech and engineering one, there's lots of different posters and they're all within the collection. So they're very easy to find. And that, look, I even left a few minutes in case you had announcements, Jen, I wasn't sure. So, um, and I'm available for questions. If anyone has any questions or want to ask anything or want me to show you something on the website again, I'm anything you need. This is literally my job. I get to just go around and like talk about a cool resource with lots of really awesome women um, and then talk to, you know, after school and summer learning program providers. Like, I can't complain. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, I invite, if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to um, come off mute or put them in the chat. Um, in the meantime, we do have a very short evaluation, so we'd love to get your feedback. Um, and so I put the link in the chat, and we'd love if you could take a, a minute to just fill that out real quick. But any questions? I will say one other thing. Um, we are doing a, um, a webinar on the, the National Girls Collaborative Project is on the 14th. And by we, I mean me. Um, so if you really enjoyed this, you can come see me again. Uh, and we're gonna be showcasing some brand new activities um, that we just created within the collection. And we're showcasing the new Million Girls Moonshot portal um, and showing folks, which is really, we went through, we dug through the 3000 different assets and found what we, in in collaboration with after school providers. So it wasn't just like me going, I think they want this. Uh, we had a whole group that gave us input on what um, after school folks would be interested in. And so that portal is very specific for after school folks and and has things that we think would be useful for you all. And it's tied to the equity and inclusion framework um, with the Million Girls Moonshot. So thank you all. Um, I hope you found this helpful and that you can use some of these resources. If you end up doing something really cool with them, feel free to tell me because I love hearing about it. Um, I, I love after school. I love youth development. I've been doing this forever. So thank you for letting me come share my nerd excitement. Um, and if you wanna connect with ambassadors and need help with that, let me know for that as well. I can help connect you. Thank you so much, Jessica. And I invite everyone to um, either put in the chat or use your emoji reactions to just share your appreciation um, for Jessica. And we just thank you so much for your 
um, energetic and like just how much you you love all this stuff. I feel like it made me really excited, even though I don't, we don't, you know, we're at the line, so we don't have kids to do all this stuff with, but um, I'm sure everyone else is, can, can use all of this information and resources. So thank you so much thank you. for joining us. And then thank you all for, for coming. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you at our next um, OST community meeting. Thank you all. Have, have a wonderful rest of your Friday.